The Massacre of the Eunuchs The Ten Eunuchs, otherwise known as the Ten Regular Attendants, were a highly influential cabinet of officials who worked within Emperor Ling's imperial court. Their connections and actions were a great source of corruption for China in this time, with their downfall not being able to remedy this. Despite being coined as a group of ten, there were far more eunuch members, although the ten that are known as the regular attendants are Xu Yan, Guo Sheng, Sun Jiang, Bi Lan, Li Song, Duan Gui, Gao Wang, Zhang Gong, Han Kui, and Song Dian. The group's rise to power began with Zhang Rang, who was from Ying Chuan Commandery, and Zhao Zhong, who was from Anping Commandery. They both started out as palace attendants, but were promoted by Emperor Huan during his reign. Zhao Zhong became further distinguished in the 150s when he aided in a coup against a highly influential military general who had monopolised his power. Zhao Zhong was enfiefed after this, then his marquis state was increased again with an annual bonus of grain that he was allowed to draw from. When Emperor Ling came to power in 165, both Xiao Zhong and Zhang Rang were promoted again, with their Marquis titles being increased even further. They had befriended two other highly influential eunuchs named Tao Zhi and Wang Fu. In the novel, Tao Zhi is listed as one of the ten, but historically he wasn't. When these two passed away, by the year 181, Xiao Zhong took the position of Emperor's Chamberlain. By this point, Zhang Rang and Zhao Zhong had the support of the other ten eunuchs, who all held high status and a Marquis title. They set up a web of friends and families who were spread throughout the commanderies of China, and they became notorious for their misconduct. One small positive act in this time is that Zhang Rang desired running water for the palace at Luoyang. He ordered Bi Lan to build chain pumps and suction pumps outside the Peach Gate. Zhang Rang had also set up a network throughout his housekeepers, who would openly accept bribes from influential people. Meng Tuo from Fufeng Commandery saw after a great title. He donated his entire family's wealth to one of the housekeepers to guarantee that he was noticed. Later on, when he arrived at Zhang Rang's residence, he saw there was a long list of people waiting with carts filled with gifts, but being at the back of the queue, he thought he was too late to enter. He was shocked to see the before-mentioned housekeeper come out and welcome him as if he was an honoured guest. Others who were waiting in line noticed this and thought that he must be a friend of Zhang Rang's, so they began to shower him with gifts. When he eventually met Zhang Rang, he shared the gifts he had received from the crowd with him, and he was delighted. Zhang Rang repaid the gifts by aiding Meng Tuo in becoming the inspector of Liang province. The Yellow Turban Rebellion broke out in the spring of 184, where one of Zhang Zhui's followers, Tang Zhu, betrayed them and leaked some information of their planned uprising to the Han. It was He Jin who obtained Tang Zhu's letter. The eunuch's actions were called out and blamed for fueling the rise of the rebellion. When Emperor Ling received a memorial from Zhang Jun urging them all to be put to death, the eunuchs removed their shoes and hats then knelt, promising to donate all their wealth to fund the armies to quell the rebellion. Emperor Ling was convinced by their charade and refused to punish them. Another similar memorial was sent not long after this, but it never made its way to Emperor Ling. Lu Zhi, who had scored numerous victories against the Yellow Turbans, was preparing for the final attack. Zhuo Feng was sent to inspect the progress of the army, and somebody suggested to Lu Zhi that he prepares a bribe for the arriving eunuch, but he refused. Zhuo Feng eventually returned to the capital and slandered Lu Zhi, where he said, he's staying firmly inside his defences and lets his soldiers rest. This greatly angered the emperor, so he ordered for Lu Zhi to be executed and sent troops with a cage to go and retrieve him. Huang Fu Song vouched for Lu Zhi, though, by complimenting his military tactics, which he himself applied to achieve success. Lu Zhi was later reinstated as master of writing. Fu Shi had also performed well in his battles, but he had received false accusations and never got any rewards for his merits. This is most likely due to a letter he wrote to the emperor before he was dispatched to fight against the yellow turbans. Even when Zhang Zhui has been beheaded and his followers have changed their clothing and submitted to law and order. Your servants will still be anxious that things may get worse. How should that be? In just the same way as one vessel should not contain charcoal and ice, so wicked men and virtuous men should not both take part in government. Wicked men realise that when a good man's work is noticed, there appear the signs of their own destruction. They will work deceits and falsehood, and they will combine to create distrust and hypocrisy. 
Emperor Ling began an investigation into the founder of the uprising, Zhang Zhui, and had the Minister of Justice and some Imperial Secretaries carry out the task. The corrupt investigation team came back with evidence that framed Zhang Jun as a learner of the Taiping sect, which led to his imprisonment, torture, and death. It was the eunuchs themselves who were secretly collaborating with Zhang Zhui, even when two of them, named Feng Xu and Xu Feng, were caught colluding with Ma Yuan Yi and executed, Emperor Ling merely scolded the rest. They begged for mercy yet again, and pushed the blame onto others before the Emperor just gave in and let them off. It's not known specifically how Emperor Ling found out, but it could have either been from Tang Zhu's letter that He Jin had acquired, or a letter that Wang Yun discovered after one of his battles. The eunuch Lu Xiang was then slandered around this time, and imprisoned by Zhao Zhong and Xia Yun where he ended up committing suicide. He was then slandered even further, with the claim that his death proved his guilt. So Lu Xiang's family was also arrested, and they had their property confiscated. Another eunuch, called Xiang Xu, criticised the other attendants with a written memorial in 184. When Zhang Rang read it, he claimed that Xiang Xu was seeking to delay the military response of the imperial authorities. Xiang Xu soon found himself in prison at the Yellow Gates, which was run by the ten regular attendants. Here, he inevitably met his end. When the Yellow Turban Rebellion was put down, the ten attendants were enfiefed with full marquees for their good work, despite the fact that it was proven that they actually worked with and aided the Yellow Turbans. An accident in 185 had caused a fire to break out in the southern part of the Imperial Palace, and so the officials had to organise its repair job. Under the suggestion of the attendants, Emperor Ling levied a tax from each farm to raise the required funds. Officials in Taiyuan, Heidong, and Dideo were commanded to deliver wood materials and patterned rocks to Luoyang. When the traders reached the capital, they were only paid one-tenth of the market prices by the bartering eunuch, who scolded them for doing a bad job. He then tried to sell the materials on to other eunuchs, who refused to buy. As time went on, the materials began to rot and decay, which led to the palace being unrepaired for years. During this time, some eunuchs tried to please Emperor Ling, so they levied the people even more to pay for even better materials, but their efforts yielded no results, and the people just suffered from it. Cavalrymen of the Western Garden were sent to speed up the transports, but they disturbed the local administrations by accepting bribes. Every official that received office had to first go to the Western Garden to negotiate their contribution to the palace before they took up their new position. The more honest officials were recorded as begging not to go, but they were compelled to in the end. Sima Ji was also ordered to increase his levy on the people. He was the current Grand Administrator of Julu Commandery in Ji Province. But just to note, he's a different Sima than the lesser known Sima Ji, who was a distant cousin of Sima Yi. When he received his orders, he said, I should be the father and mother of my people, and yet instead I'm supposed to rob my flock because of present custom. I cannot do that. He tried to claim he was sick in order to retire, but that was refused by the court. He then resorted to fleeing, and memorialised his feelings to the court before he committed suicide. When Emperor Ling received the memorial, he temporarily halted tax collection. The eunuchs had also built palaces for themselves that rivalled the emperors. On one occasion, Ling was going to visit the Yong Anhu viewing platform. Some eunuchs became worried he might see their mansions from the view, and so told him, Your Majesty shouldn't put yourself on higher ground. If you do, the people will scatter. The gullible emperor went along with this and didn't visit high towers or viewing platforms from that point on. On another occasion, Huang Fu Song rode past Xiao Zhong's grand palace in Yi City, and when he saw how extravagant it was, he had it confiscated. Shang Rang tried to bribe Huang Fu Song, but when he refused, he was slandered, where the eunuchs all claimed he was wasting resources and making no progress in dealing with the Liang province rebellion. The next year in 186, Song Dian and Bi Lan were tasked with overseeing the new construction projects. A new palace hall, four large bronze statues, and some water features shaped like animals, among a few other trivial things. Xiao Zhong was also appointed as the general of chariots and cavalry at this time, but he was removed from the job after a few months. Jian Shuo and He Jin's distrust towards one another began to grow in August of 188. This was around when the eight colonels of the Western Garden were established for the first time. They were all under the command of Jian Shuo of the Yellow Gates, who was made colonel of the First Army. Yuan Shao was made colonel of the centre army, Bao Hong was given the third army, Tao Tao was made the colonel who arranges the army, Xiao Zhong and Feng Fang were the left and right assistants, and Xiamu and Chen Yuxiong were to be the colonels of the left and right. 
The Emperor had come to inspect the army on one occasion, when Hersha noticed he was capable in military affairs, but deceived by those around him. Her and Yuan Shao began to plan ways to remove the eunuchs closest to the Emperor from power. Jian Shuo caught wind of this and utilized his new rank to have He Xin sent away to Jiangzhu. He also tried the same trick on He Jin, who by this point he hated. The emperor agreed to send him west to attack the bandit Han Sui, but He Jin delayed this appointment by arranging his own. He had Yuan Shao muster troops from Shu and Yan provinces, which made the ordeal take too long, as He Jin had to wait for Yuan Shao to return before departing. Coins were also ordered to be smelted by Emperor Ling and added into circulation, but many predicted that this extravagant display would only result in the coins scattering everywhere. This prediction was proved to be correct, as the imperial coffers were looted after Emperor Ling's critical illness took his life in 189 and chaos had broken out in the capital. The eight-year-old Liu Shi had been secretly entrusted to Jian Shuo, who had desires to install him onto the throne, but Liu's 13-year-old brother, Liu Bian, was chosen instead. His mother, Empress Dawaga He, with her brother, He Jin, took on the roles of the regents on behalf of the underage emperor. By that summer, Jian Shuo learned that He Jin and his followers were still thinking of ways to try and get rid of him. He turned to the other eunuchs for help in assassinating He Jin, but they had already been persuaded by Guo Sheng, who in turn had loyalties to the He clan. Guo Sheng reported this to He Jin and showed him Jian Shuo's letter. He Jin then seized the opportunity to execute Jian Shuo, and then took command of all the soldiers previously serving under him. In autumn of the same year, Yuan Shao suggested to finish off the eunuchs and consolidate power, but the plan was rejected. He Jin went to discuss the matter with Empress He, but she immediately rejected the idea as she said, Since ancient times there has been a custom of the House of Han that eunuchs control the forbidden apartments. You cannot do away with that. Moreover, when the late emperor has only just left the world, how can I act so brazenly as to deal with men face to face? Dao Agahur's mother and her Miao also strongly objected, as some eunuchs had previously bribed them for protection. Empress Her also owed a debt to the eunuchs, because she only became Emperor Ling's consort after they helped her out, and so Yuan Shao's plan was refused. Undeterred, Yuan Shao suggested to He Jin another plan of his to get rid of the eunuchs. At the moment, you and your brother both control strong forces. Your subordinate and divisional commanders are all brave men of fine reputation, fully prepared to carry out your orders. Everything is in your hands, and this is an occasion sent by heaven. You, my general, must act at once to remove evil from the empire and leave a name for later generations. You cannot let this opportunity slip. Hergin took heed of this and sent letters out to his military officials, ordering them to lead their troops to Liu Yang and demand that the eunuchs are executed. Dong Zhuo, Wang Kuang, Xiao Mao, and Ding Yuan were among those written to. With Dong Zhuo setting out immediately, whilst memorialising his desire to arrest Zhang Rang and his fellows, Yuan Shao became worried that they would be discovered, as He Jin was taking too long to execute the plan, so tried to warn him. The battle lines are drawn, and our plans are in the open. How can you continue to wait and not make any decision? If the affair is delayed too long, things will change. In response, He Jin granted Yuan Shao a staff of authority so he could decide and execute his own tasks. Yuan then urged the military generals to seek permission to enter the city. Upon receiving Dong Zhuo's letter, the Empress refused to agree with punishing the eunuchs. But when his army got closer, the Empress panicked and ordered that the eunuchs leave the palace and to return to their various marquis states. Zhang Rang feared for his life and pleaded with his adopted son's wife who was Emperor He's younger sister. She in turn spoke to her mother, who then convinced the Empress to bring the eunuchs back to the palace. He Jin also became shaken by Dong Zhuo's hasty arrival to the capital, but as he was deterred from entering the city and remained outside, He Jin still had a little time to execute his plan. By September, the eunuchs had come up with a plan to assassinate He Jin. He received a letter from his sister to go and meet with her, but it turned out to be fake. When he got to the palace, he was declared guilty of treason by the eunuchs, ambushed, and then killed. Chaos then broke out in the capital. Yuan Shao and Yuan Shu led He Jin's forces and indiscriminately slaughtered anyone who looked like a eunuch in the palace. This led to the death of some 2,000 people. Dong Zhuo also took this chance and led his men into the city to fight as well. Some young men who had no facial hair in desperation dropped their pants to prove that they were not eunuchs. He Miao fought back to help protect against the fleeing eunuchs, but he was wiped out with his men by Dong Min 
who then left his body in a park. During the attack, some eunuchs, including Duan Gui, escaped with the Empress, Empress Shao, and Liu Shi before they fled to Chang'an. Liu Shi caught up to him and managed to save the Empress, and then continued to lead his forces in pursuit of the others. Shang Rang and some ten other eunuchs came to a dead end at a riverbank. He tearfully looked at the Emperor before saying, We're going to be destroyed, and chaos will break out in the Empire. Your Majesty, please take care of yourself. The eunuchs then committed suicide by throwing themselves into the river. Dong Zhuo soon arrived to rescue the royalty, and as he was so impressed with Liu Ji's clear answers, he favoured him as a new emperor. Dong Zhuo then announced that he is of the same clan as Empress Dawa Gedong, who had raised the little lord. With Dong Zhuo now in the capital, another battle was not far off. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button, and I'll see you next time.